All right, this is Flora here, and uh, you got some floppy ears going on right now. This is not Flora, this is just a simulator. Uh, this is her roadmap to success. So uh, I'm gonna hold these treats here to keep you occupied. And you can't let a dog do this. This is kind of a, a dominance thing. Now, this is probably a little bit of confusion because she was taught to shake. I'm not a big fan of teaching a dog to shake until they're not a puppy anymore because a lot of times it becomes a pawing sort of scenario, as if on command. All right, so um, what we went over is uh, some, some rules and boundaries. Dogs are all about what they see us do, so we went over some rules to help the dog uh, see us as an authority figure. Not being allowed to be within this square area in front of the couches in the main living room. Not being allowed in the kitchen when, uh, this is when people are eating. Not being allowed in the kitchen when we're preparing food. Um, having to sit before we let them in or out of the door. Uh, having to sit or lay down before we get permission to exit the kennel. Um, having to wait uh, for the human to go up the stairs first. Uh, if it's bumpy, it's because the cat is bumping our camera person right now. Um, uh, uh, can't go out the door first in front of the humans. Uh, things along those lines help the dog see itself as literally a follower. Dog, for dogs, whoever's in front is the leader, whoever's behind is the follower. I can't reward you for putting your paw on me, but I can do it like this. There we go. Um, so um, uh, also we want to use petting with a purpose, which is asking the dog to sit, come, or lay down um, before we pet them. Even if it's just we want to pet them, the dog's not asking. Right now the dog is demanding. So we definitely, if I give the dog a treat every time it demands, it's going to continue to do so. So remember to use that hand motion over her head to put her in a sit. As soon as she sits, lower let her lick it off your hand and then say whatever the command word is only. Don't say good girl or good dog or go. Just say just the command. Um, sit. And when she sits, lower it. Let her lick it off your hand. Say sit. And then tickle under her chin to facilitate that nose up orientation. The proud dog has his nose in the air. Remember when you give a treat, the treat should go into the mouth first and they should hear the command word right afterwards. Um, we also went over some potty training uh, uh, deals. Um, the guardians uh, did a good job of potty training, but they uh, some of the dots were not as fully connected as I'd like them to be, so I kind of went over those. Um, make sure that we're uh, saying the command word right after uh, the dog starts to urinate, and then right as the treat goes in their mouth, we're gonna say the command word again. And just the command word, not good, or not a lot of adjectives. Um, let me see, passive training is just simply narrating whatever the dog does. So right there I could say paw if I wanted to make that a commandable uh, 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 option. Uh, so every time the dog comes to you, pet her and say come. Every time she lays down, pet her and say crash or whatever your word is for down. Down. Uh, every time she sits, pet her and say sit, crash. Well, here it is, right over there, you gotta get it. Uh, but the idea is we're associating, we're letting the dog do the action first and then just simply rewarding them after the fact. And the more we do that, the more they're inclined to want to do that when we give them a command to do it. When I command a dog to do something, I'm saying the command twice. Sit. When the dog sits, I put it on her chin and I say the word sit or give it a treat and say sit. Once during the command stage, one during the reward stage. Um, if you're hanging bells uh, from your back door to, uh, and you're trying to keep your dog to communicate, that means they have to potty. What you're actually teaching the dog is the bell means go outside. So you should have the bells next to the door. And I went over how to teach the dog to ring a bell to communicate they want to go potty. If you want to teach your dog how to do that, then give me a call and we can set up an in-home session for you. Uh, let me see, we went over the kennel training exercise. She did very well in the kennel. Um, it's gonna take a little bit of time to get her used to this. In the meantime, I recommend the guardians take her to doggy daycare. I also recommend that they set her up with a uh, puppy playroom. If you go to Quest Ed, on like the second or the third page, if you click the start from the beginning, I think it's the second uh, page, or the first page actually is preparing for the puppy before you come home. And it's a picture of a puppy playpen in a room with what looks like wood floor. It's actually to simulate. But uh, that actually has links to two different types of, of uh, the, uh, the uh, puppy play fencing. One of them is, is for puppies that are small. She's already big, so you'd have to go to the bigger one, which is about 40 inches, it's a little bit more durable. Um, and uh, I went through stuff off, uh, off camera with it, but what we want to do is we're going to start feeding the dog out of puppy toys. This makes toys more in intriguing to the dog because they distribute food. Uh, dogs also spend a lot of time in the wild looking for food. It's a primal important, uh, primarily important thing for them. So um, read that post about feeding your dog out of toys to increase their intelligence. They're, the toys are linked at the bottom, and if you're doing a puppy playroom, you want to start off with those, because now we can be in the room without being in the puppy play area, put the food toys down, and she's nudging the toys to get the food out, and you're in the room, so she's still interested in doing it. After you've done it for about a week, um, it'll take feeding about 15 minutes to get through all those. And make sure you have several of the, the different types of toys, so it's different problem solving. 
Um, after about a week, then you can start moving. Once you, you let her kind of get into the toy, uh, once she starts distributing the food, then you kind of quietly step, step just right outside of the way. Once she notices you're gone, if she panics, wait for a pause before you appear again. Um, but better if you can set up a security camera like I talked about so you can watch her doing it. Eventually, when we get to the point after about another week of this with us, her, her, her eating with us out of the room, then we start actually closing the door to the room um, while she's eating. So when she gets done eating, 20 minutes later, she might whimper or bark for a couple minutes and then you don't come. Well, then she lays down and takes a little bit of a nap. And, and the toys that are in there should only be in that room. We should get some marrow bones. Uh, those are great things to introduce. The first time she goes in there, there should be a marrow bone for sure. Or maybe that first time, maybe the second time. First time, just let her go in there, fill it full of all sorts of toys. Go to Amazon and spend a hundred bucks, get all sorts of different toys. There is a post on QuestEd about different types of toys, and uh, so I'd suggest you go there and check that out if you need some suggestions. Get them from Amazon, it's a lot cheaper than going to Petco and PetSmart. Um, and so the idea is we help her practice being in the kennel. The kennel should be or in the playroom by herself. The kennel should be in there with the door kind of wedged open so it can't close. And, there, and every time that she goes in there, there should be a bully stick, a treat, a marrow bone, something like that in the kennel so that she feels good about and wants to go in the kennel. Also, you can do the thing like you can put the marrow bone in like I showed you in your living room. We put a, marrow, uh, we put a bully stick and some treats in, I close the door with the dog outside of the kennel. That creates a longing to want to go in there. She kept on circling in the kennel, pawing at it. She wanted to go inside. Make her do that and then open the door and let her go inside. Uh, but when you're for the puppy playroom, like I said, most of it you want to just keep the kennel door wide open so that she can sleep in there and get used to being in there, but isn't forced to be exclusively in there. Uh, for, uh, let me see, what else? Um, I showed the guardian how to use a martingale collar. Um, it's, uh, they had a harness on her. Harnesses are designed for dogs to pull. Um, upping her exercise before we do the kennel training exercise, before we do the puppy playroom, if we're going to do anything uh, with we have guests over. The more we can deplete her energy before we practice, it's going to put her in a position to succeed. I also went through the door exercise, which is what I call it with the guardians off camera, claiming the door. She did very, very well with this. I would suggest you practice that once or twice a day with each other, uh, maybe or with family, friends, and neighbors. And after about a week or two, you, you just somebody will go to the door and she'll just stay 10 feet away from the door and be like, time for you to go get that. Yes, I appreciate that, sweetheart. <laughs> um, feeding her, um, like I said, I would feed her out of the toys for about a month or two to get her really enamored with it. And we want her to sleep in the puppy playroom. Um, and she should spend some time in the puppy playroom when you're there. Now, if you can go in there every once in a while and just kind of hang out with her, just put some pillows against the wall and just bring a magazine, your iPad, watch a movie or something in there. So she has some time practice. So it's not, it doesn't mean exclusively when I'm in here, you're gonna be in here. Uh, or that I'm gonna be in here alone. Sometimes the humans are with me. And the idea is to have her practice being in there while you're in the home. Maybe just in the hallway or right outside her line of sight, but she can hear you or smell you, she knows you're there, but she is also by herself and practicing being calm in the playroom, just like we talked about in the video above, about practicing being calm in the kennel. Focus. Focus. Um, because she jumps up, make sure when we come home from work that she's excited, don't pet her. Anything you're do she's doing when you pet her is what you're rewarding, including excitement, fear, anxiety, aggression. Uh, she is a nipper. Uh, she's nipping a little bit and mouthing maybe is a better way to say it instead of nipping. So in the time her teeth touch you, ah! and then I can go back to petting her. But anytime her teeth touch you, even if it's not an intentional bite, she just needs to learn bite inhibition. She's a little bit old for it. She's got a pretty soft mouth, but it's never a bad idea to continue practicing that. Remember not to walk around her, walk through her. If she's in your way, walk and bump into her. She needs to learn the choreography is I need to defer and get out of the human's way because I am not the leader, the humans are. Uh, feeding, make sure that the human eats something first before you put the food in the, uh, in the toys on the floor. And eventually when you go back to a dog bowl, same sort of thing. Dogs eat in the order of their rank. Um, am I forgetting anything? The escalating consequences. Uh, the guardian was worried she's gonna uh, forget those, so I'm gonna go over them real quick. So the first thing we do is hiss. That didn't work there, but it, it's been working pretty well for her. Hiss one time per incident, match the intensity of your hiss to her energy level. Sit. Second consequence is to abruptly stand up. Standing up is your I mean business position. When you stand up, sit. Um, make, your authority is pointing whatever direction your hips and shoulders are pointing out. So if she gets up and moves around, pivot, keep her in front of you. As soon as she stops moving, stands, sits, or lies down, take two steps backwards, one with each foot, pause for one second, then you can go back to doing what you're doing. That's the second consequence. The third one is to march directly at the dog until she turns sideways to you or greater. As soon as she turns sideways, stop in place. 
Put your feet back together so they're next to each other, and then go to the second consequence. Pivot, as long as she's moving around, as soon as she's stationary, take a step backwards. Uh, wait one second, then go back to doing what you're doing. Um, the fourth consequence is, uh, and that one, the only thing about the third one that doesn't, uh, wouldn't apply, is if the dog turns sideways inside a designated no dog zone. If she's not allowed to be in the kitchen when you're cooking, she turns sideways when you march at her, keep bumping into her till you cross that threshold. That's who, how you enforce an invisible boundary. Uh, the fourth one is the leash timeout. We put her on a leash, step on a leash about, four, about three feet away from where it attaches to her collar. She protests, let her, don't say anything. When she sits down, take your foot that's on the leash, slide it towards her to take the tension off the leash. When she lays down, we take our foot off the leash. She's now free, but she, the leash is still attached. She should not walk around dragging the leash unsupervised, it's dangerous. But if a couple minutes go by and she misbehaves again, we step on the leash, reapply the consequence. Or if a couple minutes go by and she does, she's good, then we take the leash off, it's not quid pro quo. What we're saying is if you're gonna be defiant, you lose all freedom, as soon as you return to a calm and balanced state of mind, freedom is restored. Remember, hiss, stand up, march, leash time out. Always go in that order. Now you can combine them. If I spilled some drugs here and I was worried she's gonna get some Vicodin or something, I might stand up, hiss, stand up, and rush at her all at the same time. You can do that, but try to use as little as necessary. The old uh, Lexian, uh, don't use a hammer when a feather will suffice. You wanna use the softest touch you possibly can for the dog. Also avoid pushing her or any sort of force. You'll activate her opposition reflex. That's why I like using the martingale with a special twist of the leash. Um, am I forgetting anything? Sit. Well, when you come home, if she's excited, don't pet her. Ignore her. Just walk by her. As soon as she calms down, start reaching towards her. If she wiggles, get up and walk away again. So you can help her understand. Ah! Sit. The only, sit. The only time that, uh, uh, that you're going to pet her is when she's got four on the floor and she's nice and calm. Now, if you make the yelping sound and she keeps on mouthing and biting at you, then a lot of times that's an indication she's tired and she needs a nap. So that would be my suggestion for that. Flora, you turn around. Let's, let's give good camera presence. We were just in Los Angeles, so it's, well, I was, not you. Mm -hmm. Sit. Sit. This is Flora's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.